Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Our biggest challenge right now uh, in 2015 and uh, afterwards is the treatment of triple negative breast cancer. And it's not the biggest challenge because it's the most common form of breast cancer. That's the biggest challenge, it's hormone receptor positive disease. This represents about 15% of breast cancer patients. It's the biggest challenge because to date, our best treatment is still chemotherapy. And we run out of chemotherapy. And if patients have breast cancers that don't respond to our best chemo drugs in the early stage setting, we don't have anything which we know will improve their outcome or their, you know, or even their survival. So when you're faced with a patient who has metastatic triple negative breast cancer or a patient who has not responded to neoadjuvant therapy, uh, even still having early stage disease, your options are very limited. So you know the the sort of marker of triple negative breast cancer really doesn't help us at all in selecting the right treatment for a patient. We have data now that suggests that being having this triple negative cancer means that your, your uh, tumor may be more responsive to drugs which cause direct DNA damage, like the platinum salts, carboplatin, cisplatin. And you know this is, these are from two neoadjuvant randomized trials in the US and in Germany. And I think that where that data goes very much dependent on the long-term outcome in those patients, additional trials that are going on now, and biomarker data that might help to identify which patients with triple negative disease have a better response. The one thing we can look for is mutations in BRCA. And now with extended panels, we're looking for mutations in many different genes that confer an increased risk, although to a lesser degree than BRCA. And the reason why it's so important, I think, to look for BRCA is that in the metastatic setting and in high-risk early-stage disease, there are a number of different clinical trials testing PARP inhibitors. Well, we know about PARP inhibitors that uh, block a pathway of uh, DNA uh, repair, so you damage the DNA and can repair itself. Uh, you have a defect in uh, another major pathway for DNA repair if you have a mutation in BRCA gene. And so if you block PARP, block the enzymes responsible for another pathway in DNA repair, we know that in patients who have a BRCA mutation that you can shrink tumors, not in everybody, just like all treatments, but that you can actually shrink the cancers in the metastatic setting. That's been shown in breast cancer. So then the next question is, how can we make that better? And the idea is that we're going to look to see whether or not there are patient groups that respond better to the PARP inhibitors. So you want to know if your patient has a BRCA mutation. There's no question. And there's a lot of emphasis being put now in education worldwide to try and make sure that patients understand the uh, options available to them to get testing done if you live in a place where your testing isn't covered. And also that the resources include uh, really uh, international support for that if you can consider a clinical trial that's available. So that's, you know, we're still finding that testing is not universal. And of course, patients have their own concerns about obtaining testing, but it's really important for everybody with triple negative breast cancer to have that question asked, have you had testing for these genetic markers? So that will help us a little bit put patients into trials. There are clinical trials with three major PARP inhibitors, uh, olaparib, rucaparib, and talazoparib, which are PARP inhibitors that are all a little bit different. And the interesting thing about the biomarin PARP inhibitor is that it uh, has this trapping mechanism uh, trapping PARP and making it less available. And so in preclinical studies, it looks to be very potent. And its single agent activity in patients with BRCA mutations was also quite impressive. So they're doing actually a study in the first line setting, as are other uh, companies and other PARP inhibitors being tested in this way, looking at uh, the PARP inhibitor compared to treatment of physician choice, standard chemotherapy. So that's really a biomarker-driven trial to say if you have a 
uh, BRCA mutation, you know, what's better. And it's first or second line. I mean, it's not, you, you can have had some prior chemo, but you can't have had prior carboplatin or cisplatin in the metastatic setting. Because what's interesting is some studies suggest that patients who have these mutations, who've received prior platinum and their cancer has grown on that platinum, that their cancer seems to have developed a concurrent resistance to PARP inhibition, which is fascinating. So anyway, that they're doing some other studies as our other uh, PARP inhibitors being studied in patients who've had prior platinum and had resistance, as well as multiple lines of prior chemotherapy. So in the near future, we're going to have a lot of information about that that I think will help us. And we hope that these trials are going to lead to the first approved PARP inhibitors for BRCA-associated advanced breast cancer. And then there are trials looking at patients who didn't have a pathologic complete response or have very high risk early stage breast cancer with Olaparib, trying to look to see whether or not you could uh, reduce the risk of recurrence in patients with BRCA mutations and then in a larger group of patients with triple negative breast cancer. Now, our, you know, for trying to find a biomarker in triple negative disease, so-called sporadic triple negative disease, of susceptibility to DNA damage has been very difficult. And we saw from the TNT trial uh, from Andy Par uh, Tutt that I really, if you had sort of a marker called homologous recombination uh, defect uh, of DNA damage, that it didn't predict more sensitivity to carboplatin versus docetaxel, which is really interesting because these drugs work by very different mechanisms. So it suggests that, and along with additional data presented at ASCO in 2015, it suggests that these tests may or may not tell us who's sensitive to DNA damaging agents. They may be markers of response to chemotherapy. They may be markers of response to a broad class of chemotherapy drugs that damages DNA. We're going to have to wait to see. And the tests are being approved all the time so that the so-called HRD tests are including several different arms of uh, the ability to repair DNA so that the test may be more applicable potentially in very early cancers that haven't already developed other mechanisms of resistance. So we'll see. I mean, right now, you know, PARP inhibitors are being studied in patients who have sporadic triple negative breast cancer in the neoadjuvant setting and in the metastatic setting as well uh, as the post-neoadjuvant setting, high-risk adjuvant. So we're gonna have a lot of data in that group as well. One interesting study that I think is very important is a neoadjuvant trial looking at paclitaxel, paclitaxel and carboplatin, or paclitaxel, carboplatin, and voliparib, the PARP inhibitor voliparib, to see uh, whether or not uh, those, uh, you know, the carboplatin alone is enough or whether voliparib adds additional data. And that uh, study is based on a trial called iSpy2, where one of the arms of iSpy2 that we presented in uh, 2013 showed an increased probability of pathologic complete response comparing voliparib, carboplatin, paclitaxel to paclitaxel. All arms were followed by doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide, and I think that's really intriguing. There's also a randomized phase three trial looking at voliparib in the metastatic setting in combination with carboplatin. So paclitaxel carboplatin versus paclitaxel carboplatin voliparib. So there you can see there are four PARP inhibitors that are now being tested both in BRCA mutant uh, patients as well as in a uh, population of patients with sporadic triple negative disease. Huge amount of work going on looking at uh, these uh, markers of DNA damage to see where we're going to go with that. And then one really interesting uh, study I learned about that we'll be starting up is uh, looking at, at Stanford with Melinda Telly, we'll be looking at patients who have some of these other less common mutations, because right now the trials are all looking at patients who have BRCA mutations. So if you have, uh, for example, another mutation uh, that uh, is associated with a defect in DNA damage, of which there are a number that have been identified, then you can't go on the trial. So she'll actually look at the biomarin PARP inhibitor in that specific population. I think a really important trial. So there are four different PARP inhibitors that are in clinical trials. We have uh, voliparib, olaparib, rucaparib, and talazoparib. Um, and uh, they all work by a little different mechanisms with talazoparib trapping par the PARP, and very interesting mechanism of action, most different from the other three.
uh, very highly potent in vitro. But right now, we don't know of in vivo differences uh, in patients uh, other than cell lines. We don't know of patient differences in those drugs. So uh, in the search for treatments in triple negative breast cancer, uh, we've all gone back to the TCGA, you know, say, okay, you know, what kind of mutations are seen in triple negative disease and which ones are targetable? And one of the things that's been found in what's estimated to be, you know, maybe 15%, maybe a little higher, 20, 23%, depending on how you look for it, look at it, of, uh, of triple negative breast cancer are mutations in NOTCH. And uh, NOTCH is actually activated by gamma secretase. So if you use gamma secretase inhibitors, uh, you, which of course are out there, uh, then maybe you could block a pathway important uh, for triple negative breast cancers. And also NOTCH expression has been associated with you know, adverse prognostic factors, bad cancers, et cetera. So there's a whole exploration right now looking at trying to block NOTCH now like CDK, although not quite as complicated, there are multiple notch. And so uh, a number of investigators are looking at these different notch receptors to try and understand which ones are important, where, and uh, there are a number of different potential agents out there. But uh, now uh, several companies are studying their gamma secretase inhibitors or notch antagonists uh, in uh, patients who have triple negative breast cancer that overexpresses notch. So it's a specific group of patients. And of course, studying it in the non-overexpressors, but really the interest is whether or not you could target that group of patients. And you know, uh, the toxicity, I think, is better understood from these agents now uh, and uh, being managed, uh, I think, better uh, so that the drugs are more tolerable.